Russian political, economic, and military dominance in the Arctic has been steadily increasing, while the rest of the world's attention has been focused on trade conflicts and changing geopolitical dynamics. It should come as no surprise that Russia wants to expand its dominance in a region in which it feels at home and which provides many opportunities in a variety of fields, ranging from energy and commerce to defense. Russia is by virtue of its geography the largest Arctic country. The fact that there are 2 million Russians who live in the Arctic confirms that it is, in many respects, a Russian territory. The significance of the Arctic has long been recognized by the Russians. In 2007, they sent a very cold diver down to the bottom of the Arctic Sea to plant a flag at the North Pole. Perhaps to show their dominance? The nation then unveiled its Northern Sea Route Development Plan, which was released in 2018. During the next 15 years, the Russian government intends to massively raise economic growth along the Northern Sea Route, basically establishing the region as a viable alternative to the Suez Canal for shipping cargo between Europe and Asia, particularly during summer months when the ice covering the sea may eventually disappear entirely. When compared to the route through the Suez Canal, the Northern Sea Route, the NSR, is roughly 40% shorter in terms of sailing distance from a port in Northwest Europe to the Far East. The shorter distance may enable more than a doubling of vessels' operational energy efficiency performance. That is why Russia has been silently spending on Arctic military and economic infrastructure over the last decade to help boost its Arctic territorial ambitions over the Northern Sea Route, which is proving to be a much more easily accessible route for trade between Asia and Europe and restore its status as a military power. Russia is spending 5-6% to of its gross domestic product on defense. For decades, the area has been largely peaceful, but this might be about to change. Russia has restored Soviet-era military outposts and increased the size of the Navy's northern fleet. Russia is attempting to boost its military capabilities in the Arctic in order to improve homeland security while also securing the country's economic future by attracting international investment and foreign direct investment. The melting of the Arctic sea ice has increased competitiveness in the region. The northern sea route is becoming more accessible as a result of climate change. Greater Arctic traffic increases the likelihood of competition for physical access and resources as a result of climate change. Since everyone's eyes are turning to the polar region, it's no mystery that the Arctic is a treasure trove of important mining resources. It's estimated that Russia and its Arctic neighbors have untapped gas and oil deposits worth trillions of dollars, perhaps as much as $35 trillion, as well as mineral riches that they are eager to exploit. Gold, copper, iron, diamonds, and the list goes on are all forms of precious metals. Due to global warming, this vast resource base is becoming more accessible allowing ships to dock and mining operations to begin. The five nations that are closest to them are Norway, Denmark, Canada, the United States, and Russia. They stand to benefit the most from the Arctic region. Moscow, on the other hand, has done a much better job of building up infrastructure, from extending its fleet of icebreakers to renovating ports and boosting military presence in specially designed Arctic trefoils, military outposts, to support its claim over the Northern Sea Route. Any government contemplating growing its part of the Arctic, or one that believes it may be forced to protect its portion, is likely to consider building a military base in the region, as Russia has done in recent years. During the Cold War, Russia's Nagorskoye Air Base in the Franz Josef Land archipelago was nothing more than a runway, a weather station, 
and a communications outpost for the country's military. It was a lonely and inhospitable place, mostly inhabited by polar bears, when temperatures in the winter plummeted to minus 42 degrees Celsius or 43 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, and snow only disappears from August to mid-September. Now, Russia's northernmost military base is bristling with missiles and radar, and its extensive runway can manage all aircraft types, including nuclear-capable strategic bombers projecting Moscow's power and influence across the Arctic despite intensifying international competition for the region's vast resources. The Arctic Trefoil, a shamrock-shaped facility made up of three large compartments, stretches from a central dome, is painted in the white, red, and blue colors of the Russian flag, sprucing an otherwise desolate vantage point along the 5,600-kilometer or 3,470-mile North Sea route along Russia's Arctic coast. Further structures on the land, which is known as Alexandra Land, are used for radar and communications, a meteorological station, oil storage, hangars, and construction facilities. In comparison to the United States, Canada, Denmark, and Norway, Russia has pushed to impose its dominance over wide stretches of the Arctic in recent years, as melting polar ice, as a result of global warming, has opened up new prospects for resource extraction and shipping routes. Increasingly, China is showing an interest in the area, which may contain as much as one-fourth of the world's remaining untapped oil and gas reserves. Tensions between Russia and the West over dominance will likely loom in the coming years. Russia has 53% of the coastline in the Arctic. Russia's Arctic military stations are mostly centered in and around Murmansk Oblast, although the country has recently increased its operations in the region's high north. Russia has made the most of its Arctic region to its maximum potential. Wrangel Island, Cape Schmidt, and Katelny Island developments are right across the Bering Strait from Alaska. Visualizing Russia's Arctic presence shows the density of Russia's military capabilities in the region. For Russia's future economic and military viability, the region is significant. As a result, significant financial increases have been made to Russian military and commercial operations in the Arctic over the course of the last decade. Most of the country's major projects and infrastructure are focused on natural resource development and the security of its maritime route, the Northern Sea Route, which makes everything efficient and cost-effective for the nation. Because of Russia's desire to maintain its position as the Arctic superpower, it is putting forth an all-out effort to protect its economic interests in the region, including broad territorial disputes over waterways and an increased military buildup in a region that the United States has largely overlooked. Vladimir Putin has significantly changed Russia's strategy to global growth, and he believes that the Arctic will play a crucial role in Moscow's re-emergence as a great power in the future. Aside from the fact that rising waters in the Arctic are allowing for extended shipping seasons on both the Northern Sea Route and the Northwest Passage, they are also becoming important considerations for military and commercial strategists in Washington, D.C., Moscow, and Beijing. It is widely acknowledged that the Arctic plays a significant role in Russian strategic thinking, maybe even more so than its actual significance in creating Russia's security environment, which includes dealing with NATO in the Western theater, a broad range of instabilities in the Caucasus and Central Asia, and the increasingly fierce struggle among growing powers in East Asia. From historical traditions to Putin's personal preferences, many elements have led to the inflated perception of the Arctic's critical role in global trends, which is based on erroneous assumptions. In conclusion, Russia has built a number of military bases in the Arctic, including airfields, radar stations, and naval bases, which are essential for protecting Russia's interest in the Arctic 
and ensuring that it maintains its power and influence in the Arctic, both for territory, resources, and the Northern Sea Route.